So here we've got a cultured silver perch and we're going to begin this by describing a bit about some of the anatomy of the fish. Fish are sort of given like three different types of lengths that you can measure them. So the first one is the total length which is a measure from the tip of the mouth to the tip of the tail. The fork length is here as I show in here. It's from the tip of the mouth to where the fork is in the tail. And then the third way of measuring is a standard length that's from the tip of the mouth to the caudal peduncle right here. And there are, I guess, different people like to use different measurements for fish depending on what purpose they are and what species because tail lengths vary greatly, especially in ornamental fish. So that's why we don't always use this. Uh, a defined type of length when we're describing fish. So now we'll start talking about the fins. So here I'm showing you the dorsal fin and you can notice that this only got a single dorsal fin. Some fish have two dorsal fins but notice here as well the dorsal fin has got spinous processes so you gotta be very careful when you handle this. The dorsal fins used for steering. Here we've got the pectoral fin which is a paired fin and it helps fish to sort of steer and also reverse and here now we have the pelvic fin and these act as rudders and this is the anal fin which is positioned near the anus. Other thing you want to check with the fish as well is you've got to check that for the skin any lesions feel the mucus make sure it's not sticky or too slimy um, so this fish has been dead recently and it looks quite okay. Next you like to check out the eyes. It should be convex, it shouldn't be sunken or exophthalmic. Here it's uh, slightly exophthalmic due to the method of euthanasia being percussive stunning. Next you check the health of the gills. It should be a healthy tomato sauce look. If it's got pallor means it's anemic. If it's dark maybe something like nitrite toxicosis. And you want also to look at the gills, make sure it's not clumped or have excess mucus. Now we want to turn the fish to the side, uh, to the bottom, and look at the vent especially. It should not be protruding and it should not be red. And it's very important to check this area especially just to look for evidence of bacterial enteritis. So now we're getting the neutral buffered formalin ready so that we can put the organs in as we collect the specimens. And before we go on too much further, the first organ we will need to sample is the gills. The reason for this is because this organ tends to orderize very rapidly. So it's the first thing you want to take as soon as the fish is euthanized. Notice when I'm cutting the gills, I'm holding it by the gill arch and we're cutting either side of the gill arch, taking care not to damage the gill filaments. Now to get into the oral cavity to examine that you first remove the gill covers which is also called the operculum which is a bony plate that helps with pumping of the water through its buccal cavity and here I just showed you that I'm using a larger pair of scissors uh, which is helpful to cut through bony structures and then we put the final cut through to the front of the mouth and then we'll bring it a close-up view. You can see that it's got gill rakers on the anterior portion of the gill arches and every fish or most fish have four gill arches on each side. So one, two, three and four. And now we're just taking off one of the gill arches so that you can actually see the anatomy of it. So we've got this cartilaginous uh, semicircular part. This is called a gill arch and these are the rakers, rakers that help filter the food out for them to decide whether it's food or whether it's debris that needs to be removed. And coming out of the gill arch are primary filaments and you notice that there are two sets of filaments. So the fish is able to either hold these apart or together depending on how much of the gills they need to recruit for respiration and each of these lamellae Primary filaments will have secondary lamellae. Now we move on to 
dissecting into the fish. So here I'm just uh, producing a little um, incision so that I can get into the fish. And once you've made the initial incision, you can extend that with a pair of scissors. When you're cutting through here, if you stay very midline, you can avoid the pelvic girdle that makes it quite difficult to cut through. Here you have to stop short of the vent, as you can see here. We just stop right there so that we don't actually drag or damage any of the internal organ structures. We extend the incision forward or cranially. Next, we extend the incision up and around and notice I'm using the largest set of scissors here to cut through the bones. And now, after we remove this last body flap or wall, uh, you now have the fish. That body flap you can actually use as a sterile surface if you're out in the field and without a sterile surface. So if we have a close look at this fish here, we've, we can see all the organs. There's a lot of fat in here and that's typical of cultured fish. And here's the liver sitting in the cranial portion. Um, and it's quite a discrete organ in the silver perch, but in, uh, in koi, they tend to be more diffuse. However, when we're talking about rays and sharks, they tend to occupy pretty much all the ventral aspect of the coelomic cavity. And the reason they have such large livers is that it acts as a buoyancy device because they are without a swim bladder. So here we're going to move in and have a close up look at the heart, which is very close to the gills. So here it's still beating and that's very normal in uh, freshly dead fish. And here we've got a little membrane uh, that's we call that the pericardial membrane that separates the rest of the uh, coelomic cavity from the heart. Here what I'm holding on with the forceps is the bulbous arteriosis. Then this one here is the ventricle which is a bit of a pyramid shape and above that is the atrium and before that again is the sinus venosus which is quite difficult to see here. We'll try and pry away these things. Okay, we can't quite see it but just trust me that it's there. So what happens with this is that the sinus venosus collects all the blood from the peripheral circulation the atrium grabs that blood, pumps it down to the ventricle. The ventricle pumps it to the bulbous arteriosus. The bulbous here is made of an elastic fiber. And here, instead of having a real pulsatile motion of uh, pumping uh, blood through the gills, cranially and caudally through the rest of the body, it actually sustains the pressure so that it's more of an even pressure for blood passing through these organs. So now we're just going to dissect away the heart so that we can place into formalin um, for histo histology testing. And why the heart is a great thing is that it also acts as a reticular endothelial organ. So it's great to see any reactions there are to any bacterial infections. So now we're going to dissect off some of the liver for histoxology testing as well. So make sure that you grip the organ very gently. Now, to be able to visualize the rest of the organs, I'm going to carefully dissect away all this adipose tissue to reveal the gastrointestinal tract. It's not very scientific, but it works. So here, I have removed the fat. And so, having a look at these organs, um, you can see there was the heart, this is the liver. This one here is going to be a dilation of the anterior gut, which looks to be a stomach. But anatomically correctness, you need to have a lowering of the pH to be a true stomach. But for for this uh, purpose, we're just going to call it a stomach. And in here, we've got a lot of pyloric ceci, which help with the digestion of the food. And as the food passes down through the intestines, 
is probably the jejunum and ileum. It goes then into the large intestine here where it creates the feces. And what I've got here now, that I'm grouping out here, are the gonads. So we'll take a sample for histology testing. Now we'll take a few samples of the gut. Anything that looks a little bit different for histology testing. That's the best thing to do if you're not sure what you're dealing with. And as I remove these things here, you can see this little dark organ to the bottom left, that is the spleen. And it's located right next to the stomach, which is where in a lot of animals the spleen is located. So make sure that we take all of that for histology testing. We just clear this place up a little bit. Just a bit of house cleaning. Now that the coelomic space is clean and tidy, we'll talk about the swim bladder. The swim bladder here are two sacs. We've got a cranial and a caudal. Some are able to gulp air to expand the swim bladder and some actually produce air through a, a sort of a, a plexus of blood. And if we were to dissect away this swim bladder, uh, you see that the membrane is nice and clean. There's no reaction, no thickening, no inflammation. So that's a healthy swim bladder. So we'll take a little bit of that for histology testing. And what you'll notice are uh, some dark organs in the retroperitoneal region. These, this is a kidney. Um, in carp, they tend to be two discrete objects. Uh, in salmon, they tend to be fusiform going from cranial to caudal. Uh, so here, this is an opportune time to take a bacteriology sample before you take any, before you contaminate it any further. But we don't need to in this case, we're just collecting a bit of kidney for histology testing. So make sure that you grip the kidney very gently. So now we're going to cut through the musculature just so that you can see what it looks like on cross-section. So here's a cross-section of the musculature. So you can see a lot of the bulk of the muscle is white muscle. And these are large diameter, fast twitch muscles for speed. But it's not for sustained activity. What's for sustained activity are these red muscles. You can see a very thin layer there. You wouldn't, so you can tell this fish does not swim continuously for a long time. What else you can see here I'm pointing at is a layer of white connective tissue, otherwise known as a great lateral tendon. What it does is it gathers all the forces of the muscles to generate power to the tail. All these large muscle bolts, all the tendon attaches to that and it moves the tail like so. What else you can see here uh, is the hemal arch. So you can see that when you're taking a caudal venal puncture, you'll be entering this tail vein right here. And above that is the tail, the artery. But of course, when you're taking the blood sample, it's going to be far more caudal, taking it inserting the needle there and you'll actually be entering this blood vessel here.